this tour. You'll come to an area, you'll see some benches on the right. We're not going to stop there, but you'll see some benches, and that's where the new entrance tour makes their first stop. Well, Morrison blasted that out. He came on back in these parts of the cave and started exploring, looking around, and he eventually came upon some signatures on the wall, and he found some footprints. That was a sign to him that he had found a connection to the historic name of cave. So he puts in some rough wooden steps, and he puts up signs, new entrance, the Mammoth Cave, and starts tours. Guess what? He is promptly sued by Mammoth Cave, historic Mammoth Cave. He took him to court. Like, who are you to be coming in here and saying, you've got Mammoth Cave? We have Mammoth Cave, not you. But he was able to go to court and prove that he had found a connection, another entrance to Mammoth Cave. The only thing the courts made him do that is on any literature that he put out, such as pamphlets or even on his tickets, he had to have printed that if you took a, his, a, a George Morrison New Entrance Cave tour, you would not see any of the historic man of cave. Now, you've often heard when you start a business, there's three keys to a successful business. Location, location, location. <coughs> to get to the historic Man Cave, you had to drive right past George's new entrance. So he had the big billboards, the big signs. His workers would jump up on the sideboard of your car, and they would lead you here. And you saw the cave, you saw Mammoth Cave, you thought, I must be at the Mammoth Cave. Did he tell people otherwise? Probably not. Morrison was a businessman, folks. He was very good at making money. I have heard him called an entrepreneur. I've also heard him called a scoundrel. He knew how to make money. He may not always do it the honest way, but he knew how to get people to his cave. And I'll tell you some more of those in a later stop. He had a big hotel, a big, beautiful hotel. I have a postcard of this hotel. And it was just a very beautiful part here. So he was a big competitor to the Mammoth Cave. He was also not very popular with historic Mammoth Cave. Josh Wilson, a tour guide that worked at the historic Mammoth Cave, was quoted as saying that if you want to see the truth, Mammoth Cave, you need to drive about a mile and a half past this so-called new entrance. Another guy was quoted as saying anyone called advertising for this so-called new entrance to Mammoth Cave should be prosecuted to the highest extent of the law. They did not like Morrison. And I think we can all understand. They had the man in the cave and felt like he was going to step on the toes a little bit. So, now Morrison, he owned this cave until the early 1930s. In 1926, the state of Kentucky started making plans to make this a national park. They had to purchase the property, purchase the land. Morrison was very slow to sell because he was making as much money off tours as what the state was offering. But finally, in early 1930, he sold this portion to the state of Kentucky for the sum of $300,000. That's about $3 million in today's money. So Morrison, he already had money, was a pretty wealthy fellow, but they say he came out pretty good out of the deal. So, you know, again, just a little bit of history there about this part of the cave. And everything we're going to see from here on out was discovered by Morrison. No one had seen any of this part of the cave until he discovered and found all this. And as we go farther on the tour, I just really want you to look around. And I, I think this also when Stephen Bishop discovered, in fact, for the early books we saw the gypsum. Imagine that you were Morrison or you were Stephen Bishop and you saw all this for the first time. I mean, folks, I've worked here for three years and my, you know, I still, I can't imagine. Their mouth had to drop and they had to stand in awe when they saw this. And I think Morrison's dollar signs are swirling around in his head when he found it. But he needs to make a whole lot of money. But in the end, but we'll talk some more about Morrison over the next few stops and then about some of the things he discovered as well. But questions? Any questions at all before we move on? Is everybody rested? <laughs> that was the easy deal. <laughs> the big one's coming up. That's Arrowbridge. Now, I will say after Arrowbridge, it starts to ease up a little bit. But if everybody's ready, I will meet you at the top of Arrow Bridge, and I got a couple of stories I'll tell you that they're about George. <laughs>